Okay, so we've seen how to set up um, everything we need to start coding with chart.js. Let's dive right in. Um, we're going to make this example here, um, which is just three data points showing um, com the number of com personal computers in the US over time starting in 1983 and going to the year 2000. Um, this data isn't super interesting, I guess, but it's a good place to start, very simple. Um, and this is the example that we're going to make together. So you'll want to have gone and um, made a duplicate of the uh, line chart template code. And um, we can go ahead and just delete this stuff at the top. This is a comment that gives us some basic info. Now, um, if you've never written code before, if you've never done JavaScript before, don't worry. Um, and in fact, most of what we're doing for this project this sort of code, but it's actually more like just defining how our, we want our visualization to look um, in this particular format. So we're not doing a ton of like deep coding kinds of stuff, though, if you know how to do that, chart.js is really cool because it allows us to extend that functionality in a whole bunch of really rad ways. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, actually, I'm going to open this in another window here just so I can kind of keep track of what we're doing and so I don't forget anything. Um, and let's dive right in. So we can see at the top here, we have three variables. In JavaScript, variables start with the word let. You may also see var, um, which is for our purposes the same thing. Um, then the variable has a name. So we have the variables data, labels, and options. And um, in the template, they're defined as being um, with these brackets here. And um, the square brackets mean a list. And our data is very often going to be in the form of a list. So if we imagine, for example, our data is computer um, number of personal computers in America. Um, and so in 1983, we have two. Our data is two. Then in 1990, it's 54. And then it's 168.6. Now, you might be thinking, OK, already something is fishy here. Clearly, there's not only two personal computers in 1983. No, these are in millions. So you could write the number out really long, um, but it's going to be hard to read. So I think this makes more sense. Um, oh, and you'll notice it's separated with commas. Then our labels are um, what uh, the data maps to. So in this case, it's years. And I know it's 1983. 1990, and the year 2000. Um, so we've gone ahead and defined those. This next line here is actually where we do most of our work. This is where we define the options for our chart. And then the last line here is where the chart gets created using the stuff that we've um, added here. So we really don't need to change that line. But a lot of this work is going to happen here under the options. Now, you'll notice the brackets for this are curly. They're not the square brackets. And that's because it's not a list, but it's um, what's called a dictionary or an object. And we'll see um, that the difference here is that we define, oops, we define um, something as a pair. So it's got a name and then a value associated with it. This is very much like uh, the variable data here, which holds this list of numbers. Um, but we can have a whole bunch of different stuff inside of our options. And so in chart.js, this is where we define a ton of different parameters. For example, um, that our type of chart is going to be a line chart. So I have the word type here, and then a colon. That's the name of the value. And then the, the value itself here is line. And in this case, it's text, so it's in quotation marks. Um, then we separate everything with commas, and we can add lots and lots of stuff here that's going to define how our chart looks. So next, let's go ahead and add our data. And we can do that by saying um, data. And then you'll notice we've got another set of curly brackets. That's because this data um, parameter contains a whole bunch of sub things. And we'll see this happen a lot, too, where we define something that then contains things in of itself. Uh, for example, data includes labels, um, and we're going to send in this variable called labels here, that comma again, and then we can add our data. So in um, chart.js, we can actually have multiple data sets. So imagine we want to graph a whole bunch of things side by side. Um, so the parameter is data sets, and then inside that we can um, do multiples. But for now, we're just going to do one. So we're going to say our data is the variable data up here. 
And um, let's see, I think that might be enough for us to graph it. There we go, cool. So just a few lines of JavaScript and like I think I promised, not a lot of programming. Hopefully it doesn't feel like too much programming to you. Um, we can really quickly create this chart and chart.js handles a lot of the hard work. For example, it um, creates our axes here. It automatically figures out what scale this needs to be. It does all the drawing commands, all of that kind of stuff. Now, this is great, but it doesn't really look that good. Um, so we're in the next example, we're going to um, modify this or continue working on this to make it work a lot better um, by uh, changing colors and some interactive options and stuff like that.